account of their materials, writing tablets, fall into a sort of nobody's ground between codicology and epigraphy, the truth is that they make up the oldest book form known to us. As a matter of fact, we still have many clay tablets from the 3rd millennium BC, mostly coming from Mesopotamia. Although the clay tablets are doubtless the most abundant of all, the tablet format is not constrained to any material in particular, and that includes even precious metals, like the case of the gold plates of Pirgi that we can admire in the image. A very curious sort of metal tablets is the so-called tabellae de fictionum, or damnation tablets, written on lead with occasionally strange signs or minute letters. They were buried together with figurines that presumably symbolized the persons they were supposed to damn. But the most utilized material for this sort of book form was for sure wood. In the Greek world, wooden tablets were used at least from the times of Homer, and its use has also been discovered in Egypt, ancient Israel, and the Etruscan world. The diffusion of wooden writing tablets in the classical world was extraordinarily wide, mostly due to their cheap price, but probably also because they could be transported and stored very easily. And their use for the daily life writing needs was perpetuated in Europe until paper became an object of domestic consumption. The tablets were made up of wood sheets in a variable number, two, three or more, held together by means of a metal ring or a leather thong, forming in this way a sort of rigid and hard notebook that received the name of Codex, Codicillus or Ugilaris. The sheets could be prepared to receive writing in different ways. For instance, the famous Vindolanda tablets, presently in the British Museum, are really thin and therefore very convenient to transport and store. Sometimes they were polished and whitened so that one could write on them with pen or brush and ink, and then they are called tabulae de albatae. On most occasions, the modality utilized is the one described in the 9th century by St. Aldhelm in one of his famous riddles. It goes like this. My first birth came forth from honey-bearing bees, but then my outer part grew from trees. Shoes gave me a tough bark. Now an iron gold scores my fair face, and with its turns flicks out furrows like a puff. But to the field it brings nourishing seed from heaven, which yields great harvests with thousandfold fruit. Alas, that such a holy crop must be removed with poor weapons. If you wish, you can stop now the video and try to solve the riddle. I guess you solved it, but just in case, here is the solution. The outer part, coming from the trees, is of course the wood from which the tablet was made, carving the middle part in the shape of a very shallow box that then was filled in with bee wax. The shoe's leather is most probably the thong that held the tablets together in diptychs or polyptychs, or maybe some sort of covering and the plough is the stylus with which one wrote on them. The harvest is of course the written text that could be erased by rubbing with the opposite side of the stylus that was shaped as a spatula. During the Middle Ages, wax was mixed with tar and that formed its blackish hue. The use of writing tablets was so common the tablets became a sort of token of the literate man or woman, and the usual way of carrying them was hanging from the belt, usually falling on the left side, so that the carrier would easily catch them with the left hand and write with the stylus in the right hand. Because writing tablets remained the cheapest writing support for centuries, until paper became common in the West, they were commonly used for drafts, accounting, and school exercises. 
Saint Hiron, for instance, used to write his works on tablets that he delivered to professional copists who transcribed the text onto papyrus or parchment. And in the image, we see now Hildegard von Bingen doing exactly the same. Individuals also sent letters of friendship written on tablets. In 390, Saint Augustine apologized to his correspondent Romanianus because he had addressed to him a letter written on parchment instead of on wax tablets. And from his words, we understand that sending a letter on one's wax tablets was a token of a deep esteem, as it was presenting somebody with a wax tablet diptych. But writing tablets were also utilized as weapons in several occasions that we know of. When St. Patrick arrived in Ireland, cum tabulis in manibus scriptis, that is, with writing tablets in his hands, folks interpreted that artifact as a powerful weapon. And we would be tempted to think that those primitive Irish people believed that they had some sort of magical power if we didn't know of some persons being killed with tablets as criminal weapon, as was the case of a young student of Corvey, and many years before the martyr Cassian, if we are to believe Gregory of Tours' account. A part mentioned deserved the ivory tabellae, known as consular diptychs. They were waxed in their inner side, with the outer sides splendidly decorated. They were made on the occasion of somebody's elevation to the consulate and given to friends or relatives as present to commemorate the appointment. As many as 67 of such pieces have been preserved, the oldest being a sacerdotal diptych from 388, now in the Archaeological Museum in Madrid. The first proper consular diptych dates from 406 and is in the Cathedral of Aosta. The most recent one is from the 7th century. The high number of consular diptychs preserved can seem striking. It is due to their rich exterior ornamentation and to the fact that many of them were recycled for book bindings. Mm -hmm.